In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to paint a Milky Way. Hey, what's up? Today's video is all about the night sky. I'm going to show you my palette, the colors I use to create the sky back here, how I create basic stars and ones that glow, and how to create this beautiful Milky Way galaxy in the center here. So remember, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss anything. Although I'm going to be using oil paints today, any technique that I use can also be applied with acrylics. So grab your paintbrush and let's go paint. So when I block in for my oil paintings, I use Liquitex Basic Acrylics because they're super cheap. So I'm just going to do a good amount and start painting with that. I also have, this is a one inch brush that I'm just going to be able to cover the whole canvas with. I sprayed my palette down with some water and I'm just grabbing a little bit of water and I'm mixing it into the paint so it flows on the canvas a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and paint this entire background in black. I realized pretty quickly that the one inch brush was just going to take way too long so right here I switched to a two inch brush and I just start layering down that paint a lot faster and I just smooth as I go along. I'm also working in crisscross motions here. Even though I'm working on a 9x12 Fredericks ultra smooth canvas panel, there's still some tooth to this canvas and working in a crisscross motion just allows the paint to really get in between the teeth. And then just smooth back and forth and up and down to get everything really nice and even. So here's my palette and I started mixing this off camera because I didn't know what blue and red I wanted to be to go better. So right here I have phthalo blue, quinacrinone magenta, quinacrinone red, and titanium white. And I liked the magenta and the phthalo blue mixed together. It makes a really deep purple. And then when I added white to it with a little bit more quinacrinone magenta than phaino blue, I got this really light purplish pinkish tone, which I think is going to look really good in some of these areas in the Milky Way. I have my walnut alkyd medium, which I'm going to mix in with my paints to make them flow a little easier. And I'm going to have to start keeping my palette flat now because I don't want this walnut oil to run down my palette. And all you need is just a little bit. So I'm going to start with the dark color and I'm just going to get a little bit of the oil and I'm just going to mix it into my paint. I want to keep it dark. And I want to just start by covering the canvas in this in certain areas. This is a pretty beautiful color. You, you can't see it too much, but if you get into the light somewhere, you can see it a lot better. But I don't want it to be really predominant. I wanted it to look black but I feel because it's got a purplish tone it makes a beautiful midnight sky and it's just gonna cover this acrylics very very well. And it, you may think that I'm wasting paint putting a dark color on top of black but with oils the 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 way the light bounces off of oils is really, really cool. And in certain lights, the way you look at this, you can actually really see 
the deep blue and deep purple that's going onto this so it doesn't look like a flat black. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm just going to really scrub this paint into the canvas and cover most of this black area. I've got to make some more of this dark color to finish out the sky so I'm going to just grab some more phthalo blue and quinacrino magenta and phthalo blue is a lot stronger of a color than quinacrino magenta so we're gonna need a little bit more quinacrino magenta in the mix than we will phthalo blue. We're not gonna take this dark color all the way to the side of the Milky Way the sides of the Milky Way are going to be just a little bit lighter to show that the brightness is kind of shining off of it. And then there's also this little tiny section in the middle of the Milky Way right here that is going to be dark as well, kind of like you're looking through the Milky Way and seeing the sky behind it. So now that all the background is covered in the dark color, we're going to remix some of this using the quinacrinone red and a little bit of titanium white. And we're going to paint this section right next to the Milky Way. It's just, it's just a little bit lighter than that dark purple that we used for the sky. And that's just going to help the Milky Way glow a little bit more. So just scrub that into the canvas. I'm using a large filbert brush. And right in the center here where that dark area is, just to help the glow a little bit more. We're going to add it there and help blend it up into the dark color that we put at the top. We don't, we're, don't, we're not worried about our mountains right now so you can sort of cover them up a little bit because we're going to go back over them in a little later and fix every, fix the edge. And all of the products that I'm using to create this, I will have them linked in the description below. So you can use the same colors and brushes that I'm using to create this. And this color is going to be right here as well. So before we get rid of that color, we're going to do the opposite side of the Milky Way and do this color down here as well. While still using that phthalo blue and quinacrinone red, I'm just altering the color a little bit, adding more quinacrinone red into it and some titanium white to get a pinker color that I'm going to start adding to the Milky Way. Don't forget everything you do in the Milky Way. This is a lake that we're doing, so while we still have the color, we will also block in the color down below as well in the lake. We're going to do that step now, even though next week is going to be the reflections on the lake and finishing out the mountains. Now that we have all that down, I'm going to start working on the smaller details within the Milky Way itself. For that, I'm, we're going to switch over to a round number six. 
These brushes have a very nice point to them and I always refer back to them. If you like them, I will link them in the description below. So I'm going to go back to this pink color, but I'm going to make it lighter. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more titanium white and adding it to the pink that we have already been using. I'm also grabbing some medium and mixing it in with the paint as well just so it will flow easier and because this is an alkyde based medium it will dry a lot faster as well which will help tomorrow when this dries we can come back in and add a little bit more layers on the top of it. And I know I'm saying it's a bright pink but it's actually very very far from a very bright pink compared but compared to everything on the canvas already because everything is so dark you can get something far from white and still have it be very bright so we're just gonna go in and randomly do some of these squiggle lines if you are using oils while well, for doing this. I actually love the fact that when you put them next to another color they take so long to dry that they pick up the other color and they essentially make a new color on the canvas. It, it creates a whole spectrum of colors and you really don't have to do much of it. It kind of makes it all look like it's supposed to go together. And remember, everything we do in the Milky Way, on the lower part of the Milky Way, we have to add the, re the, the reflection down in the water as well. And this part always looks like a complete mess, but I promise once we start blending, it's all going to look a little bit better. <laughs> so this is all that I'm really going to be doing. I'm going to be mix mixing a few different colors, and I'm just going to be adding them to this Milky Way like I'm doing. So I'm going to speed it up just a little bit and I'm not trying to get the reflection exactly like the Milky Way is going to be. There's a lot of things that the water is going to distort just a little bit so it's not going to be a perfectly clear replica of the Milky Way that's coming in this from the sky. So we're going to take the same color we've been using and we're just going to add a little bit of blue to it. And that's just going to change the color just a little bit. We're just going to keep adding blue and red and just change up the color a lot just to add some variations to this Milky Way. The more variations you can get, the better. And still, all we're really doing is just wiggling on colors here and there and just try and make it to where there's no pattern. Um, we really do kind of want it randomly, so still keep stepping away from it and looking at where a color might look like it needs to be. Now we're adding even more blue. And we're gonna just do this just a little bit. I'm gonna add some just a little outside the Milky Way just to show it's not very bright so it's not gonna be predominant but you're gonna be able to show that something's still there. Remember too, all the wiggle lines that you make don't have to be very, very bright. Um, I'm going in right now and I'm mixing a little bit of the phthalo blue and conacanum red and I'm making some dark wiggle lines too and that's just going to help add some more depth to this Milky Way and in the very end we're going to just pick and choose some dark little areas too. So to establish certain areas darker that you think look great in that specific area, 
Make sure to keep going back and forth between the lights and the darks. Don't forget the darks. And if you are following this tutorial using oils, this is one of the best parts that I love is you can lay all this down and step back and look at it and not have the rush of having to blend every single time you lay it down a color. If you're using acrylics, I will have a card pop up that shows how to do this section in acrylics. What you really have to do is put the acrylics, the one wiggle line on, and then blend it really quickly. And that's the way you're going to build up layers in acrylics with the Milky Way. So the technique is very different. Okay, now that we're done with adding all the colors to the Milky Way, we're going to start slowly blending everything together. So I just have a dry little number seven filbert brush right here and I am gonna go around every individual little color and blend the edges of them. And I'm also, while doing this, because everything is so wet still, I'm also gonna try and manipulate them a little bit and push the color here and there to where I kind of think that it looks the best. And the reason I'm using a filbert instead of a mop brush to blend this area is the mop brush would over blend. I don't want everything to look kind of muddled together. I still want you to be able to tell each squiggly line and the color that I laid down. So in order to do that, we're not going to blend everything. We're just going to start to blend the edges and push the paint around a little bit on the canvas. If I start to pick up too much paint on my brush, I'll just grab a rag here and I'm just gonna wipe off the excess paint and then go back in and keep blending. And normally when I start blending things like this, when I have to blend darks and lights, I'll normally start with the lights because the darks can take over when you're working with whites as well. So for example, if I started with the darks, when I went over the lighter areas in this painting, they would almost completely dis make them disappear. So every single time I go into a dark color, that's normally when I'm gonna wipe my brush down and then go back into a light color. Now I just finished up blending all that. Okay, that is gonna be enough for the first day. We have to let this dry and tomorrow we're gonna come back in and add the brights and make this glow and work on the stars. It is the next day now and we're going to add the highlights onto the Milky Way to help it glow. I'm adding some turquoise onto my palette now and we're going to just add a little bit of turquoise into this Milky Way because it's my favorite color. I'm using a round number zero right now to do the little tiniest details within the Milky Way. How I'm actually picking and choosing where these highlights go is I'm looking for what we did yesterday, the underlying part and where there's like where's there's a dark purple i'm taking a light purple and i'm do i'm just adding that highlight to the middle of that and just like when you do highlights in any painting you do not want to overdo it or it takes away from that brightness 
So I'm just doing these highlights in little tiny areas. If you hold the brush at the very tip, it will help to create more random, not randomized <laughs> lines and textures in your painting. And then I have a dry brush that I am just blending that little tiny highlight out. So we're going to come back in in a little bit and we're going to add some black wiggle lines through this and that's going to add some pretty cool textures and depth to this Milky Way. If you start to get too many wiggly lines or it just starts to look kind of weird, because these are oils, you can always just take a step back from your canvas, stare at what's not working right and just wiggle those out or manipulate the paint, push it around on the canvas and break them up wherever you see fit. And you're probably gonna get so annoyed with me saying this, but everything that you do to the sky, make sure to do in the reflection. <laughs> Okay, so now that we're done with all the squiggly lines, or now that we're done with all the highlights, we're going to add in some of that dark and really add some depth to this Milky Way. To make the dark color, I'm just remixing that sky color. So I'm doing phthalo blue, and quinacridone red and just mixing that together with about 10% of medium just so it'll flow a little bit more. I'm using that same liner brush that I used to add the highlights onto the Milky Way and I'm just going into that night sky color and adding it in sections that sort of make sense in the Milky Way. So we at the very top, we have that little black that's separating the Milky Way, and I have a little bit of those squiggly black lines coming off of that. Unlike when we added the base colors, I'm gonna blend these dark squiggly lines as we go just so I can see what's working and what's not and I can adjust anything that I need to on the fly. I know I want to break up this lower section just a little bit, but I'm not exactly sure where I want to add that black that'll have the most effect. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit at a time and blend that in, step back and look at it because it's going to be a lot easier to erase that little black area than if I did a really big squiggle line through the whole middle of it and then turns out I didn't like it. So when you add little, a little bit at a time, things are gonna start to form and you'll be able to either know when you need to stop or things will be a little bit more clearer of where you should add a little bit more. I've added all the black that I want to this Milky Way now we're going to move on to the stars and I have this very stiff bristled brush 
And all we're going to do is go into our titanium white and it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, my titanium white has other colors mixed in around the sides all the time from when I dip into it. So if you pick up a little bit of that extra color, it's perfectly fine. It's probably actually a little bit better that way because we don't want the millions of stars that we're going to create with this technique we don't want them to be so bright that they take away from everything else so we want this to really flow and really be liquidy so we're going to pick up more walnut oil than we normally do when mixing in with our paints and i tap my brush to even make the paint evenly distributed throughout the bristles when I do this technique, I don't want there to be huge blotches of stars. I want to control the bigger stars. So with this technique, all we're doing is creating the little, little, tiny, tiny stars that are just millions and millions in the sky. So all you do is hold the brush and we're going to go like this. And what that does is put a ton of little white dots. So we're gonna pick it up and we're just going to use our finger and spray, I guess is the right, <laughs> the technical word for it. Um, it's a very technical word. We're gonna spray with our finger and the brush. We're gonna, we're gonna distribute all the stars in the sky. And you can kind of see it going on up here in the corner but there are a million little dots going on right now and this is the easiest way to create just thousands and thousands of little stars and one last time I promise don't forget the reflection in the lake add the stars in the lake as well The closer you bring your brush to the canvas, the tighter the group of stars is going to become. So if you look in the night sky and you really study it, there are clumps of stars together and then spots when there's not. So all of these little areas, you wanna go over the entire thing kind of about a foot away and just add a bunch of stars throughout the entire sky and then go back in and add these little clusters of stars and you just get probably about four five inches away from the canvas and you just make these little clusters and that will help also to make the night sky look more realistic And before you try this technique on your canvas, if this is your first time doing it this way, try practicing on a piece of paper or something that's other than your painting, just in case it doesn't turn out right or you need to adjust the amount of, of medium that you're using to thin down your paints. Um, this is, there is sort of a learning curve to this. I've been doing this for a little while, so I know exactly how I want to use my finger and how much medium goes into my paints but if this is your first time just try practicing just a couple times on something else until you get the feel of what you're supposed to be doing before trying it on your painting so after we lay all those clusters of stars down we're going to use the night sky color and add just a little bit of titanium white to that just to create a lighter version of that night sky and what we're going to do is just add little circles dots randomly throughout the night sky and although some are going to be in the darker areas in the night sky I'm gonna focus most of these dots are these brighter stars is what we're going to be creating I'm going to focus them in the star clusters themselves that we made. 
and creating just a few stars this way is going to help them glow. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit just so you can see with more detail up close version of everything that I've done on this side of the sky. You can see these, these little clusters of stars, this little line that I've created with the cluster of stars. And you can see my technique on how I'm making these stars up close. It's going to be all up to you how many stars you want to do. Obviously you can sit here for hours creating millions of stars, but I don't have the time to do that. So I'm just going to add just enough to give the illusion that there are a lot of stars in the sky. I'm going to start to add the highlight inside of some of these stars. So I'm going to switch to a smaller liner brush and thin down some titanium white and just pick a handful of these stars that we did. And if you didn't know, this is the same way that you do street lamps or Christmas lights and I'll have a card pop up. I've done Christmas lights before. This is the same way you find the color that you want and you make a bigger circle and then you take that color and you add a lot of white to it and you put a dot in the center of it and that is the way to make that light glow or seem like it's on. And that is how you do a Milky Way and a night sky. And come back next week, I'm going to do this bottom half where the mountains are, as well as how to create reflections. I know I already sort of started to do the mountains, so you kind of get a sneak peek of where this is going. But we're going to add even more detail on top of this. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, check out the playlist at the top and I hope y'all have a wonderful week. <laughs> Bye guys. Do you, oh, don't touch it. It's still wet. I'm gonna fix that a little later. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. What year butterfly?